All right, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started. Good afternoon. Whoa, I'm going to have to go back there and turn down the microphone. Thanks, Eric. So, good afternoon and welcome to LA 2M. Uh, Derek's going to grab the sound for us. All right, so welcome. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. Uh, my name is Jim Musial, and uh, I usually uh, kick these uh, events off this uh, each month. I'm really excited to, to be here today. We got a great speaker. Glad to see everybody here on such a lovely, rainy day. I'm going to turn your phone off. But anyways, uh, again, welcome. Uh, we're glad you're here today. Uh, weather could be a little better today, but, but we're here, and we got a lot of uh, wonderful information to share today. Um, before we get started, uh, I know we've got a number of people here that are here for their first time or maybe haven't been here in a while. Can, can I see a show of hands? First timers are wonderful. So we're glad you're here. Um, a little bit about LE2M for you guys and a little bit about the format. Uh, LE2M is a nonprofit organization. We are in our ninth season uh, sharing marketing ideas, uh, sharing strategies for marketing. Um, we have a wide range of businesses and business owners and small business and organizations and companies that, that come through our doors here that uh, both from the speaker standpoint and from the people who attend. Um, towards the end, you'll get a chance to, uh, to meet everybody. We'll all have an opportunity to introduce ourselves so that we can do a little networking afterwards. Um, so don't be in a hurry to get up and leave if, if you can stick around. It's a great opportunity to meet some of the other people, some colleagues that are in the business and maybe may be able to help you with your business. Um, like I said, other has been we're in our ninth season. We have a, a wonderful group of uh, volunteers that help this organization continue to operate and grow. Um, Stacy in the back, when you checked in, is our is our new LA to a manager. So you'll be seeing a lot of uh, information coming through through Stacy. So we appreciate her time. Roger Rail is here and, and provides the video for us each month. Um, we try to live stream when we can, but if uh, sometimes the connection is not real well here, so we end up posting the videos to our LA2M website. So uh, after, usually by the end of the week, we'll have uh, Bilal's talk up, and if you uh, you know want to go back and take a look at it or even previous uh, talks that we've had, they're all on our website at la2m.org. Um, um, if you use social media to check in, please uh, hashtag LA2M. We'd appreciate that. Um, so in addition to Roger doing the video, Carter Sherline is here, and I'm sure he'll probably be here at some point doing our uh, photography, and he posts them on our Facebook page each month. Um, and we just, we have a group of people that help us keep this organization running, and we're very fortunate because it continues to grow and get better every year. So we're, we appreciate you here. Um, format will be, the going to talk for probably about 30 minutes, um, and then we'll have some time for Q&A afterwards. And um, at, after that, about quarter to one, we will uh, we'll cut out and we will take a few minutes to go around the room and everybody will have the opportunity to introduce yourself. We'll pass the microphone. You can let us know who you are, where you're from, if you have an ask or need real quick that you can share with the group. And we'll get around the room and get out of here by one o'clock if, if you're in, on a time, uh, time schedule. Otherwise, stick around and network. It's a great opportunity, like I said, to, to meet other people in the industry. So um, we are very fortunate to have Bilal Saeed here today. Uh, Bilal wears several hats and is a very busy person. I'm sorry, you know what? Thank you, bud. One, one very large part of LA2M, because we are a, a volunteer organization, so uh, we need help in keeping the organization run, so we do that through sponsorship. And uh, each month we have an opportunity to, uh, to sponsor LA2M. If your group or organization would be interested, I would love to hear that from you. Um, but we are very fortunate this month to have a sponsorship with uh, the, uh, the Digital Marketing Workshop. Um, and I think Nina is going to get up here and tell us a little bit about it and, uh, and share. And I know you have a flyer in front of you, so you can kind of follow along with the flyer. But Nina's going to say a few words about it. Thank you. My name is Nina Dromsa. I'm with the uh, Center for Digital Engagement. Um, I'd like to tell you about our workshop we're having on November 17th. It's going to be from 2 to 8, or from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The theme this year is the new face of Main Street. We have some great speakers. One of them is Jen Heyman. She's going to be our keynote speaker. She is the director of marketing for Zingerman Service Network. She's going to be talking about how, even though they're a very vocal community of businesses, how half their revenue is actually done online. 
We're also having the CEO of Moose Jaw come and speak, um, which again is a local retailer, but they do over 80% of their business online. Um, if you use the code LA2M to sign up, we're doing $15 off of your ticket, so that's a little special we have for members of LA2M. And your ticket will also get you breakfast and lunch. So you sign up, use LA2M, get $15 off, and it's November 17th. And I'll just add to that, I'm Bud Gibson, uh, great job, Nina, but I just want to pitch uh, but I'm gonna even a little bit more. Uh, so Nina brought out two highlights, but we have more than just those two highlights. We actually have 25 panelists and speakers speaking in two tracks. So when you shell out your 35 bucks with code LA2M, you're getting breakfast, lunch, 25 speakers, two tracks, focusing on the new face of Main Street, speakers from Google, Duo, um, Little Caesars, we're going to have the director of social media from there too. So um, uh, uh, there's plenty of value for your money. That LA2M code is special for you. Attendees at this lunch, as well as people who read the mailing list. So uh, just adding a little coda uh, to Nina's intro, um, and I'll uh, pass it back to you, Jim. Thank you, bud. Thank you, Nina. We appreciate it. This is a phenomenal workshop. If you have not been there before, it's, it's one, one day. Um, it's unfortunately ends quicker than you, you want it to because once you're there, the, the, the speakers are phenomenal, the topics are phenomenal. Uh, I've attended at least the last four years and it's a phenomenal workshop. You get a great discount being, being involved with LA2M. We appreciate Bud passing that on to us and, and again, appreciate his sponsorship. Yeah, and the, um, the food is worth the price. So, of yeah, I was just about to tell you that. It, it, if you haven't been, the breakfast is good, very good. The lunch is always outstanding. It's, it's one of the best meals you'll have. So they, they prepare great food there at Eastern. Um, so I highly encourage you to register. But we, how close are we to selling out? Well, uh, we're actually really close. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we actually expanded capacity from previous years. So we used to sell out very early. Um, but uh, we've got about another 40 seats to go yeah. and, and then we're done. It will sell out. So there, there will not be tickets available at the door. So I highly encourage you today to take this flyer with you, get home and this evening or while you're at work this afternoon, go online and register. It, you will not regret. And like I said, Bud extended the, the discount to LE2M and, and we greatly appreciate that and his sponsorship. So thank you, Bud. Thank you, Nina. Now let me get back to our, our phenomenal speaker that we have today. LE2M uh, has had a great string of speakers over the last few years. Um, and we are very fortunate to have Bilal here today. Bilal, as I started to say, wears many hats in addition to uh, to founding and leading uh, Pack Mode Media and Marketing. He is also part uh, owner and GM of the Ann Arbor Football Club uh, here in town and uh, AFC Ann Arbor. If you haven't been to one of their games, they're really exciting, they're a blast. Uh, Semi-Pro Soccer is here and it's growing very quickly um, and it's a phenomenal experience. And uh, they do a phenomenal job from marketing uh, socially and, and Bill will probably touch on that a little bit and I don't want to steal any of this thunder, so if you would please put your hands together and welcome to Lil Saeed. Thank you, appreciate it. No, no pressure on the, like, mentioning a sponsor right before a guy's giving a talk on sponsorship. He almost forgot to include yeah. the sponsor. So step one, don't forget to include the sponsor. Right? Well done, bud. Uh, no, honestly, the, the toughest thing about giving a chat, so I'm a super nerd when it comes to sponsorship, I'm like, I don't know why it's the one thing that I've always been drawn to in my career. Um, so it's a little bit challenging to really give these broad general statements about sponsorship because you could be talking about sponsorship to a sports team, to a local uh, community event, to a nonprofit organization. So relatively speaking, think about how you can relate these back to whatever you're doing. And we're gonna leave enough time at the end to ask some questions because one of the biggest points I'm gonna kind of touch on is um, sponsorship is one of those things that's not automated. It's very custom, it's very unique, and it's unique to the partners that are involved in creating that uh, sponsorship. So um, when you think about it, just just keep that in mind that uh, you know if this doesn't relate back to you, think about how it can and, and how that question might uh, you might have a question in relation to that. So, um, I have a question for you guys. How many people, just by a show of hands, uh, have sponsored something through their business or personally? How many people have sponsored something before? 
Okay, now let's just go ahead and leave your hand up. Uh, if you feel like you could have gotten more out of it, leave your hand up. Okay, fair, cool. So maybe we'll actually get some value out of today. Uh, a little bit more background on me, just so you guys know, uh, I'm not making all this stuff up as I go. Um, so I started my company, Pack Mode, in 2008, turning 10 in January. Pretty excited about that. Uh, feel really old now. Um, so I, I use this term properties um, in, in sponsorship. When you take over or when you represent uh, an entity as a whole, you're the exclusive provider of sponsorship opportunities to them. We refer to that place as a property. So some of my previous properties uh, are Eastern Michigan Universities, uh, Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, um, rest in peace, uh, University of Detroit Mercy, Detroit City Football Club, Oakland University, and Number Fest. Uh, that is not hashtag fest. Uh, current projects include um, mostly mostly soccer oriented these days. Um, I just found a niche and uh, it was kind of getting a little bit mm, frustrated, bored with uh, collegiate athletics, so I wanted to make a switch and I really felt like um, soccer was an area of growth uh, up until last night in the men's national team loss. Um, I'm still a little, a little bit sour about that. Um, so right now my focus is really soccer. Uh, soccer related things and, and entertainment doesn't mean I won't take a project on um, that's outside of that but uh, I think one of the early lessons in my career that I learned so um, when I started pack mode it was you know my background was in media sales so I understood how to sell something for the value of what its reach was whether it's print or online uh, but it's really selling an app and in 2008 you know previous to that was my experience um, so I started Pac-Mode in 2008, but you know I was one of the first users on Facebook just because of the time I was in school, right? It was exclusive to um, colleges at first, and so I was part of the digital transition, and so I was in a unique spot where I could really understand some new things that were being created um, with what I was learning about the traditional avenues, and I think that gave me a unique perspective of how technology meets traditional, and when you think sponsorship, a lot of people think logos, banners, and that's where I kind of like, you know, want to emphasize that technology really needs to um, find its way into that. So along that way, I learned a really important lesson, which, you know, we'll come back up during this talk, um, is, you know, I always had a really negative connotation. I was one of those people that just thought, you know, oh, salesmen are always trying to, you know, they're salesmen, they're just like selling stuff. Um, so, you know, everyone always told me from a young age, I was a good talker and I could always, you know, kind of convince people what to do, but it's, for me, selling, especially when it's a partnership-based thing, it has nothing to do with how much you talk. Um, it's really about asking the right questions and listening. And that goes back into my kind of approach that um, you'll hear more about is that there should be no cookie-cutter sponsorships. You know, these uh, spreadsheets where people have like a checklist of like, if you spend 10,000, you get these bullet points. If you spend 8,000, you, you just lose these few bullet points. I'm not into that. I'm, I'm more into a custom, unique approach whether small or big, I just think that's that's the right way to go. Um, so just a little step back, uh, trying to understand how my approach to sponsor it, sponsorship is, how I view it. Um, you know, I use the word interchangeably pretty much, sponsorship and partnership. I prefer partnership because that's how I view it, but for this conversation and pretty much, you know, everything I talk and work about, it, it really is sponsorship. I just always try and interchange those words and understand the difference of the meaning in places. So sometimes if it feels like so much of a sponsorship, I think you're gonna get the outcome that you're probably used to getting is not, not the results you wanted, not just, uh, not a true partnership. So mutually beneficial, that's the key thing to, this whole, to, to a true partnership. Um, and it's, it's, it can be cash, it can be trade, it can be a little bit of both, it can be solving a problem. Um, it can be a lot of things, but um, for, you know the, the example I always give is like for a sports team, it, you know you need transportation. Uh, doesn't mean that transportation company has to uh, write you the check uh, to be the official transportation company. They can provide the services, um, but if because it's trade, do they get less of a value out of it? Well, a lot of times people who give products or services in kind feel like they're not getting the same value as cash. In that scenario, you absolutely should because it's, you're saving that cost savings for the uh, for the client. So, um, I think um, when it comes to this, when it comes to sponsorship in your overall marketing mix, you got to understand it's just a piece of the pot, right? The same way a, a digital marketing expert or 
uh, someone in social media will tell you, hey, if you're, if you're relying on social media to drive your results solely, you're, you're gonna come up short, right? You gotta have a strong marketing mix. And a lot of us try different things, but you wanna understand where to invest a little bit more, and hopefully that's what we're gonna find out today. But uh, this is just a piece of the marketing mix when it comes to it. So really what you wanna do is figure out how to plug in different avenues um, and tie in other things you're doing into the sponsorship. Um, a few things that to me are absolutely crucial, uh, we'll call them key ingredients to, um, to, to making a, a sponsorship work, I guess, effectively. Um, relationships is everything. I feel, I feel like this is a general business you know, like concept that relationships are really uh, crucial. That's what drives business, that's what drives results. Um, in sponsorship, it's truly, truly a key component. So I've heard of concepts, like startup concepts in the sponsorship world of like, um, like think of a dating website. If you're a business looking for uh, an event or a team to sponsor, couldn't you just fill out a profile like a dating website and say, here's the things I like, here's the things I want, find me that thing, pair me with it, and here's the check, right? It's essentially, that's what you're trying to do, but the theory is, is good in practice, just not actual application, because you can't just have that kind of lack of true connection there. Who's driving those things? Who's, who's making those things happen? How are those things being implemented? How do you have a true understanding of those needs and wants from the business if you're getting it through a form, right? So this isn't an automated process. The relationship on both ends is gonna end up driving the results of this. Um, clear expectations from the start. That's a very, very crucial concept. Um, I think oftentimes we look at uh, sponsorship contracts and we're, you know, there's a lot of bullet points of what you're gonna get out of something and it might look like a lot. Um, I think to understand clearly that you know, hanging a banner um, isn't gonna be as measurable as something else is very important concept. And having those expectations clearly um, not only builds a good relationship, but also um, kind of creates that concept of partnership rather than sponsorship. Uh, realistic goals, so if, you, if you're gonna sponsor an event, a team, uh, anything, an organization, you, you gotta go in with clear goals. Like, uh, you know, a lot of times, sponsorship starts on the basis of someone knowing someone, right? So like, hey, I know someone who owns this business. I think they might be interested. They sponsor a lot of community stuff. Well, that might be good for one year, and you might get that check that one year. But what's gonna happen after that first year? Are you gonna be able to deliver the return on their investment? Well, if you don't know what they're trying to accomplish, how can you do that? And if you have these unrealistic goals of like, we're gonna you know, spend X amount of dollars with us and we're gonna split our business, and from a buyer perspective, if you're saying, hey, we're gonna give you know, $10,000 to this team and we're gonna get all of this, uh, these new leads and stuff, you gotta, you gotta make sure that that is the main focus of what you're trying to do um, so you're not chewing off too much. The realistic goals portion of this is, is crucial, right? So if, if you break it down, there's an awareness opportunity, there's a direct return opportunity. There's different opportunities of where you can um, leverage kind of um, the exposure, the, the uh, like data collection, for example, some things that people like to do, um, cross promotion on social media, whatever it is, you've got to be able to put some goals to it so that when the sponsorship's done, you can measure and say, was this successful or was this a waste of my time and money? A lot of times I see things in, um, in different sponsorship proposals these days that are talking about cross-promotion. A lot of that kind of revolves around social media and you know we'll throw out three tweets for you. Well, what does that mean? How many followers do you have? What are the tweets gonna be? Are there gonna be content in it? Um, you know, for me, it takes, it takes time for people to become partners, right? Two business organizations, to, to become partners, truly, that's not gonna happen overnight, right? So you, you're not gonna meet someone, sign a sponsorship agreement, and then magic is gonna happen overnight. The relationship aspect of things is gonna play into it. Are you communicating well with them? Are you developing that relationship? And as you do those things, you'll start to find more synergies between your organizations that you can tap into. So I'll give you an example that we'll, we'll come back to a, a little bit at the end here when I dive into examples more. 
But uh, between one of my projects, AFC Ann Arbor, uh, that Jim mentioned, and um, St. Joe's uh, Ann Arbor, it's a hospital system. So we started working together about a year ago, and at this point in our relationship, um, we're, we've come a long way. Uh, at the beginning, you know, we were we were double checking a lot of things. Hey, should we post this? Hey, what do you think of this? Hey, here, check out this piece of content for approval. Now, now we know our overall kind of strategy of, of promoting wellness within the community, the things that we like to do, the things that we don't like to do, the things that we wor have worked well. So now you just find us as partners cross-promoting one another on social media that has nothing to do with what's written in the contract. And that's, that's amazing. Because at the end of the day, when it comes time to renewal, right, for me to go back and say, hey, St. Joe's, can I get that check again? Can we partner again? Um, it's gonna be a very easy conversation. It's not gonna be, do you wanna come back? It's like, do you wanna come back for the same amount or more, right? Because you're delivering on what was done and you're going above and beyond just because of the natural synergies that are created there. I told you this is nerdy stuff, so it's like really just um, so when you're buying sponsorship, so I, I'm talking a lot from the angle of selling sponsorship because that's that's the angle that I knew best when I started. Um, just a little bit info about me. I now represent both uh, teams and properties and, and events, and I will sell sponsorships, and I will now also buy sponsorships uh, for certain organizations because I understand how they're sold so well. Um, so I'm just gonna give you some, some, some things to, to kind of tune into. Um, yeah, the, be specific, right? I, I think doing less is better, right? So um, I had this problem early in my career and maybe I still have it a little bit. Like Jim said, I wear a lot of different hats. I like to work in different projects and I like to do a lot of things. Uh, sometimes I spread myself too thin. We all know what the end result is when you do that. You're not gonna get the same, you, you, you only have a maximum output, right? If you have 100% of what you can give, and you're doing 10 things, you can give 10% evenly to each one. If you cut one of those things, you can give each thing more time. Um, so for me, for sponsorship, rather than have your logo here, you know, put this on the website, do this, uh, come to this many games, or you know, attend this event, and, and do this and that. Cut it, cut the fat. But look, just take a step back and say, okay, instead of attending five events, how can I attend one event and really get that most out of that one event? What am I hoping to accomplish out of that? Right? Am I gonna get more by hitting more games? Or am I gonna get more by putting all of my resources into one game or one event and really maximizing that opportunity there? The thing that really still kind of bothers me, um, and I apologize if, if some of you have, t have gone this route, but I'd highly recommend getting away from it is, is the route of, of having a checklist or a grid when you're selling sponsorship. Like if someone puts a, a grid in front of me, that means that they're pairing my value up against someone else's value based on demand. I, I don't agree with that concept. I agree with if I'm buying sponsorship, I should know what are all of the different opportunities. You might call it inventory. You might say like the inventory that's available is a banner. It might be a, a web advertisement. It might be a, a, a print uh, opportunity like putting your logo in, in the event program or something like that. Um, so you have to really understand what are the different opportunities. Is it um, you know, what are all those things and what are the things that are important to you? So you can start to formulate in a dream scenario, if I had unlimited money, these are the things I would want in this potential partnership. And then you can say, well, this is the realistic side of my budget. And then you can start to, you know, cross things out and say, okay, well, this is what I want to do. Because that's the thing, it's like, if you're going to, if you're going to put even $500 into something, my honest opinion is you should get something back for it. Like, if you're okay with sponsoring an event, and I'm guilty of it, I'll tell you that much, is like, you know, my buddy's son is, you know, doing this thing and needs a little bit of money, I'm just gonna cut the check and forget about it. But there are instances where, you know, we wanna give a little bit more and say, hey, well, I'm giving enough to where, hey, I'd like to get a little something back for that. What are the different things I can do? Um, and that, that kind of goes back to every sponsorship should be customized. Um, I just got an email this morning from another soccer team, semi-pro soccer team um, in Kalamazoo, and he said, hey Bilal, can you send over your, uh, your sponsorship document with uh, the pricing and stuff? I'd like to gauge where your value is at. And I replied to him, I don't have one of those. So he was like, well, you're one of the leaders in, in sponsorship for this area. Like, I don't understand. Like, how do, you, how do you tell someone how much something is? 
Um, and I'll get into that process a little bit more, but custom sponsorships are, are where everything should be. So even as a buyer, if someone puts a greater checklist in front of you, someone says, hey, we really could use your com community support, or hey, donate X amount of t-shirts, uh, you know, you've really got to understand what that value is and say, well, that, that's great, I'm happy to help and support your event, but here's what I would like in return, um, and not just my logo on, on the back. Um, it's probably advice I should not be giving uh, as, as a seller, but always negotiate. I mean, that, that, that's the beginning. That's a beginning day one thing when, when it comes to sponsorship is most of the time, especially when it's a new partnership, you should always kind of test the waters first. When there's so many different factors like we talked about, relationship that, that goes into it, um, what are the different opportunities, what's the size of the, the property, um, what's the true reach and exposure, all those things are variables that go into that. So. When you're, when you're a new partner and the first time, you should always kind of go in, dip your feet, don't dive in head first, and start with a price that makes sense for you. Um, I would argue 90% of the time, if maybe higher than 90%, if you suggest a price or you negotiate with a sponsorship, someone who's selling sponsorship, they will at least call you back and tell you, hey, here's what we can do for you. The last piece uh, is accountability. So. So often, we buy the sponsorship, we provide the logos and messaging, and the event happens or the, whatever uh, you're sponsoring is done, and you don't know what you really got out of it. Um, one thing I do for all of our partners is pr provide these pretty detailed reports um, to kind of gauge and show, hey, if you spent your money elsewhere, you know, you wouldn't be getting this value because as buyers, that we should be doing that. We should be saying, hey, are we are we spending our money wisely, right? So if you're thinking of a sponsorship, let's say $10,000 sponsorship, um, and you're sponsoring a concert series, um, and the concert series is averaging 1,000 people per event. So that's 10 events, uh, 1,000 people, 10,000 people, that's a dollar per view. Could you get a dollar per view less on Facebook? And could you get the same messaging? So what are the differences? Well, with Facebook, they're gonna see a random ad. Who knows if they're gonna click on it? Who knows if they're gonna turn their sound on? Who knows if the data's super accurate? And they don't have the missing ingredient of affinity. So when you think of back in the day when sponsorship first started, think of like old school collegiate athletics where it's like um, there was only like three banners hanging. And there would be like, let's say one was Coca-Cola. Say, man, I'm gonna support the, the people who support our team because that's how strongly people feel about certain things. So that's like the basis and foundation of how sponsorship came about. Um, it needs to grow from that though. You need to tap into that affinity, but you need to do so in a new modern way. And that's how we're gonna talk a little bit more about specific examples of, of different things. So for me, uh, the cross point of, of tech, uh, technology and the traditional platforms is, is content. Um, so I, again, so many times these days, um, whether whoever's offering sponsorship, it's, it's from the basis of, um, you know, we've got a really strong social media presence, we can do this, you know, our fans are engaged, we're doing this. That's great, what are you posting? Are you posting go buy this at this place? I don't want that, that's not gonna do anything. Um, it, might, it might annoy your followers. Um, it might, it might, might actually have a negative effect. To me, it's really like, can you tell your story through content, which is a general marketing concept, through the sponsorship platform? So again, going back to finding organizations that you have synergy with. So, uh, yeah. so it was funny, but um, you know, I'm a sports team, AFC Ann Arbor. I wanna sell sponsorship. I'm not gonna sell to a medical marijuana dispensary, not because I discriminate against them, but not, it just doesn't, there's no synergy there. I've got young kids coming to my games, um, that's gonna hurt my brand in the long run. So those are easy, simple things that you say, okay, I need to find a partner that I can tell my story with, that I can grow my story with, and that they can eventually tell my story for me. Um, again, going back to understanding the true value, I just, I just think it goes, goes back to the concept of what are the other opportunities out there, right? Um, you know, people who do data captures um, at an event, for example, say, sign up for this and you'll get this for free. 
They're, they want your email addresses. So they're gonna do some post event marketing. How much was the cost of being at that event versus buying an email list? And were those emails as quality as the ones that you could get on site? So that, those are the things that you have to answer is like, where's the value? And if you're not asking those questions about those, you're not gonna get the end result that you want. Um, I kind of mentioned inventory and opportunities, but I think from a buyer perspective, 100%, uh, if it's not clearly outlined of what the opportunities are, you have to, you have to educate yourself, right? So if you're, if you're being approached by someone and you're kind of intrigued, but you don't know too much about it, the first place you should go to is research, right? See what the other partners they have. See what kind of things they've done in the past. See what, tell them to give you an example of the best sponsorship activation they've had and the worst sponsorship activation they've had. Start to understand the different opportunities out there and it'll start to click a lot more. I'm gonna dive into a lot of specific examples now. I think I've got five or six um, that will just kind of help us better understand things. Then I wanna kind of open it up for uh, some question and answer. So. This is something I did for my own company. Um, uh, this was when my company was very young and I had an opportunity to uh, hang a banner, right? I am, uh, if you can't, couldn't tell from today's talk yet, not a, big, not a big fan of hanging banners. Like, hanging a banner is great and a lot of times I, I include it, it has some value, especially if it's a bigger organization that likes to see their brand presence and stuff on site. But what are you doing with that? You know, if the banner's hanging on a sports field, you, you better get a picture of some action in front of that banner and post that at some point in the season um, because that's where you get the value. So this was my first time as a young company to have the opportunity to be on ESPN and I wanted to let everybody know that we were gonna be on ESPN. I mean, I was just super proud of it. It was like one of those things where I was like, I can't believe that maybe at some point the camera might turn and you might see a panda. But that was very exciting to me. So what I did was I created this thing called Spot the Panda and just by doing that, I was able to associate ESPN branding, ACC branding um, with my company when I think we were like three or four. Um, and it was super exciting for me. So uh, I did this promotion um, and I think I got about 60 organic photos, user generated content, UGC. It's now more than ever even more challenging to get people to post on your behalf or your brand. But this was a cool thing. I incentivized people. It was the first time I had offered um, pack mode exclusive Adidas gear, official Adidas gear branded in my company's name. I think the only reason my company has value is because there's a cute little band on the logo and some people might want to wear that. Um, so very cool opportunity for me um, to kind of associate my brand with one that was way bigger than mine and kind of use those likes from that. So, that's a shameless like plug where I'm like, I'm just admitting to you guys, like I just, I literally rode the coattails of a larger brand. It's okay, it's smart. Um, here's a couple more examples. So these are a couple properties and things that I've actually created. Um, I partnered with the United uh, Dairy Industry of Michigan a couple years ago um, to sponsor one of our soccer teams uh, locally. And um, semi-pro soccer's kind of grown to a multi-market thing in Michigan where you've got Kalamazoo, Lansing, Grand Rapids, Detroit, Ann Arbor. And just like any kind of real entity, whether it's an entertainment event or a sports team, um, when you hang banners, when you have sponsor logos, when you have branded content, other people will go after those same people trying to say, hey, they got money from them, we, we wanna get that money too. So we were the first uh, team in the state to get uh, the United Dairy Industry of Michigan to sponsor us. And then all the other teams started calling them and said, hey, we want to we do something too. Their interest was there just because of the amount of youth soccer players that there are specifically in the state. If you didn't know, um, Michigan, I think, is the second or third highest state with uh, amount of youth soccer players. It's second, I think, only behind California and maybe Virginia, or maybe Colorado. But it's up there. It's very high. So what we did was we took uh, the approach that we were going to tie all of the, the teams together in a new format called the Michigan Milk Cup. We were able to get sponsorship dollars for each team. And by doing this, um, we didn't have to do anything in terms of spending money. So the teams are already playing games, they're already playing each other. So we used those existing things so there wasn't any additional cost. And we created a competition. Said between those guys, whoever is from Michigan will keep their points, and the winner at the end of the season will get this. Um, along with that, we were able to do a few different things. So, with milk, 
in a larger sponsorship, we felt, and this is something I always feel, is you want to hit different pockets of, of what they're trying to accomplish, right? So based on scalability, this is a larger deal. So we had multiple things and we wanted to reach multiple stakeholders. So we wanted to do something special for their farmers because the farmers are actually the members of their organization. We wanted to do something to targeted youth because youth, uh, if you can reach the messaging of drinking milk and drinking chocolate milk at a young age, you're building that messaging in for life. So we've got the farmers, we've got the youth, and then we've got actually the people within the organization that need to see the brand visible, that need to see the, the clicks on the website, and to the, the driving ROI, uh, so that they know that the data is there from that brand exposure. So we brought in featured farmers to the games. We would bring them on the field beforehand, do a live PA read, explain to people how these people were part of bringing local um, products to our grocery stores. And it was actually really cool and organic. And it ended up being one of the top three highlights for the United Dairy Industry, um, their sponsorship activation from their CEO uh, for this past year, based on the concept that we were able to hit the different shareholders, the different stakeholders within their organization. She was talking about how uh, it was amazing how we were able to target youth with our post-match autographs. And so the kids would line up to get their uh, poster signed and the players would have a chocolate milk in front of them. On top of that, that featured farmer segment was something that you couldn't do in any other platform. And quite honestly, who, who's trying to like learn or read something about a farming family, right? It's not every day we're like, oh, let me read more information. But if it's right in front of you and it's actually got a great message, support local. We all, we all kind of tap into that message right now. Uh, this one I haven't actually announced yet. So next Tuesday, I believe I'll be announcing um, this new tournament. This is Chocolate Milk Futsal Cup. I took an existing youth um, futsal tournament. Futsal is like soccer. It's five on five played on an indoor court. So it's very fast paced. Think basketball meets soccer. Very fun, very fun stuff. Played all over the world. So um, I went back to United Dairy Industry and I said, look, we did a great job of targeting youth. I've got another opportunity where we can hit even more youth, more specifically for a better bang for your buck. Um, and so what we're doing is we've actually moved this uh, youth futsal tournament from Downriver uh, to Celine and Ann Arbor. It's got 1,500 kids coming to the area. Um, and simply with the naming rights of that, now you've got the message of, of, of the importance of having chocolate milk or milk in your diet. So the big thing that they're pushing right now is use chocolate milk as a recovery drink. So after you play a sport, don't slam a Gatorade, slam a low-fat chocolate milk. And it's starting to work, specifically with um, young girls that are a little bit shying away from um, drinking milk these days. And so we're trying to educate people about the, the healthy side of that and the health benefits. And, and if you guys are anything tuned in with milk and dairy, there's a lot of negative uh, stuff that we have to combat with that. So. Um, challenges, yes, but both of these are completely unique and custom. This is a little bit more of a direct uh, tie-in. I just wanted to give an example. I did a sponsorship a couple years ago between Oakland University and University of Detroit Mercy. Uh, they wanted to create a rivalry series, and they came to me and said, we have 60 days, which is completely just nonsense. Typically, a sponsorship, larger sponsorship, takes a year to 18 months to do. They say, we have 60 days, we want to get a title sponsor, a presenting sponsor, for something called the Metro Series, a new rivalry series between the schools. So I couldn't sell someone on this concept of a new thing that hadn't existed, but what I had the opportunity was to figure out where we're spending our dollars in a large amount, and we don't have a partner there. So both schools spent a ridiculous amount on transportation, and I was able to get a deal done with Trinity Transportation um, that, that kind of brought them both together. And so both schools signed 10-year deals um, with Trinity and uh, everybody's happy. Still a deal that's in place today. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, six years ago, seven years ago now, I was able to bring Kevin Hart to the EMU Convocation Center. And a lot of people think one-off uh, comedy events or concerts, you can't sell a sponsorship. Completely false. Um, in Ypsilanti, we have this uh, newer, kind of nicer apartment complex called Peninsular Place. Um, they signed a sponsorship, which essentially gave them the rights to 60 tickets and branding to the event. They said every person who comes and re-signs their lease will get two tickets. Those tickets were gone in 48 hours. So could they measure the value? We spent X amount of dollars, we got X amount of re uh, leases re-signed, done. Very simple to them. From that point forward, every concert or show I threw, they were, they were a key sponsor. 
Um, this is a cool one I just want to touch on real quick. So this is a program I put together for uh, BTB Burrito, local uh, burrito shop here, but it's, it's reverse. I'm, I'm actually going out and finding sponsors. We're, we're trying to give money away. So I created two platforms, the Maize and Blue, keep it very simple. You can have the 250 or $500 level. I put all these crazy things in there, like I need everyone on your club organization to tweet three times a month how much, you know, like either a picture in front of BTB or uh, eating some sort of BTB. I'll also help provide pics if you need them. I 100% I know that every kid on this team is not gonna do that. But if I got half of them to do that, I literally just created 20 organic posts. So now I've got people, peers amongst their age, tweeting about how awesome this thing is organically, and their friends are all seeing that. That, to me, you can't put a price tag on that. It's been a huge, huge response for us. Um, the hardest part about that is finding the right students. So you have students that are like, yeah, we'll do that, and then they disappear like for six weeks, and you don't hear from them. Um, you also find students that are like amazing and on top of it, and we partner with those kids for multiple years. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. So when I talk about, I, I talk a lot about content and different things. I'm hoping this audio will work. Let's give this an example. Let's see if it works. No? No, no audio. So while this is playing, I'll just talk a little bit. But this is a video piece that we created from AFC and I'm pretty happy the audio is not going actually because I am the voiceover. Um, I'm a small company, four or five people. So. Um, my question I always ask people is like, when, you, when you're looking at a video like this, what is, what is it about? Is it about a sports team? I don't, I don't really get that. I get, I get like, I don't, farming, vegetables. So this is a piece of content that we originated on AFC and Arbor social platforms. Um, so we're basically becoming promoters for St. Joe's. Uh, something that they have is the farm there and through this we're able to market ourselves right I I basically got free content out of it so I sold the sponsorship to st. Joe's part of that sponsorship is uh, you know with some custom content and through this we created this piece that we were able to post uh, that they paid for and so I got marketing out of it they got some awesome marketing out of it and I think it was a win-win um, so there's just a few examples. I know it was a lot. I know it was like all over the place. Um, but I want to open it up to questions because like I, the, the key thing I said, it's so unique, custom, specific to what you're trying to do. So first disclaimer is I'll, I'll have my business cards up here. Um, anyone who wants to grab one, have a follow-up question, text, email, whatever you want to do to communicate with me, I'm happy to answer any questions. I love this stuff. Um, and, and so that's, uh, that, that's an open invitation to do that. And I'm happy to take any questions right now as well. So we got a couple minutes for a couple quick questions. We only have one microphone, so I'm gonna have maybe do two quick questions. George, if you could be loud, and we'll let Bilal answer your questions. Yeah, so a little bit of context. For the last two years, I've been responsible for um, I've been assisting the, with the 48-hour film, pro, film comp, project competition in Detroit. It's been on me to you know, raise sponsors, you know, raise sponsorships, et cetera. Um, and I was successful on a variety of fronts getting Adobe. Cool. The question that I'm trying to figure out is that um, what, if there were, so one of the challenges I've had is trying to figure out, okay, who are the decision makers of the other organizations that I want to reach out to? It was very, and, and so, you know. And it starts with, the, I think it, you like, saw in, in my key ingredients was relationships, right? Yeah. So, so your web and your networking is so crucial to understanding right. where you can get. I'll take one step back there though. When, when you're approaching someone and trying to sell a sponsorship, yeah. there's two pots of money you can get, right? There's the marketing dollars, and then there's the community dollars. Community dollars often can only be uh, given to a, a nonprofit, for example. So you'll see a lot of sports teams, for example, that don't actually have a nonprofit arm attached to their entity. Uh, we do it simply so that you can pull from both pots of, of money. Um, it also allows you to accomplish a lot more um, if you're if part of your any part of your mission. It has to do with community development. Uh, yeah. Finding decision makers, I think, is a is a challenge in B two B sales. In well, yeah, I know. I mean, but I would say this. What's your first contact that you're sending out to these people? 
Is it a sales pitch? Is it a document with prices on it? So for me, the biggest thing is like, remember I said I don't, I don't have this traditional pricing thing? I send an infographic. Like, yeah. This is how sweet we are. And I let them, it's a great teaser. I, I don't sell hard, and I, I think teaser information engages people, and I think infographics are the way to do it. I've had great success with that, because it, it literally gets people engaged enough where they're like, wait, is this person not asking for money? But they're just, they're just telling me how awesome they are, and then they want to learn more. So that's a little trick. It's worked for me. One more quick question. Hi, good uh, So I'd like to know maybe a couple of tips for approaching a strategy when you're looking for sponsors for your association versus um, looking for sponsors for your annual event. And would you ask the same sponsors uh, make the same ask for both, or so, uh, what would be the strategy? Yeah, so go, going back to what is your inventory and what is your opportunity? I would, I would, I would suggest you look at your um, organization as a sports team. For this example, is that a sports team has a very specific season, right? This is how many games, which are events, right? What you're saying, you, what's the event versus the overall? You have to understand your overall inventory. Once you have a clear picture of what your overall inventory, all your annual offerings, from local on the website to sponsoring the gap, everything is included in there. And say, okay, this is my total inventory. At the end of the year, what does my total dollar amount wanna be? Then you can start to identify, okay, these are the types of dollars that I would expect to go towards the gala, this is the type of dollars that I would expect to get out of this, but all of it's working towards this overall end goal. Right, so if you have existing sponsors that are, let's say, doing 20,000, for example, for the association annually, and you want additional funds from them out of the gala, I would suggest saying, are, are they getting 20 grand worth of what they're already giving you? And so, you know, that way you kind of have to package it as a whole. So rather than piecing off things, I, I don't like that approach as much because I think what it does is it undervalues other opportunities. So if someone's giving $20,000 to the association as a whole for the year and the sponsoring the gala is five grand, that better be an opportunity to me first uh, as a $20,000 sponsor before it opens up to anyone else. So I will start with my big boys and kind of lay them out across the top and say, okay, what do you want in a dream scenario? And I plug them into the different inventory opportunities. Then I know what I have left and that's what I can go out there and sell from there. All right, can you please join together and give a hand for Bilal and his talk. Hopefully Bilal can stay for a few minutes, and I know there's probably a few more questions, and so please take the time to come up and, and, uh, and talk to Bilal afterwards. Uh, we're just going to run out of time here, so I want to take the opportunity uh, to thank Bilal for being here today and sharing that information. It's, it's outstanding information. Uh, many of us in here with our multiple hats that we all wear, uh, a lot of times have to get involved with sponsorship. Uh, as part of the marketing of, uh, of our uh, of our organizations and associations, so uh, wonderful information to share. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a few minutes. We're going to go around the room, pass the microphone. If I could ask you to stand up, uh, give us your name, your company, and if you have a quick ask or need, and we'll get around the room pretty quickly. All right, we'll start right up here. Okay. Uh, my name is Shashaka Sadiq. I'm the founder of Ingenix Digital Marketing, and I'm the director of growth. And um, I help companies grow their business. Hi, everybody. Derek Maribon here. I founded Ingenix. I also have a sports app startup called Fanalope, and Blah, that was a great talk, man. Thank you. I'm Clay Sala. I'm one of the interns for Derek working on his sports app, Fanalope. Bacon. I'm also the other internship intern uh, working on Eric's uh, family pet. Hi, I'm George. My company is Brainstream Creative, and I help companies that want to use video uh, produce a lot of video, high quality, in a short amount of time at an affordable price. Hi, I'm Bob Sanborn. I'm retired. Thank you. <laughs> um, one thing I've got, I got a question for you. Sure. There's a pattern in your examples. There's always a student at the end of them. Does this work with like real people or just some 
you know, a student is a unique, a unique person. They yeah, no, I mean, specific to the soccer team, a lot of our activations are for young people and young families. I give, yeah. a, I give a lot of relation back to students because so much of the market here in Ipsy and Ann Arbor is relative to student engagement, right? But I actually think the strongest, most valuable uh, group that you can target right now is young families and young kids. So if you can reach the kids, you can reach the parents. Family is a different person. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm not talking about, I'm yeah. saying young people who don't have kids, don't have responsibilities, on a dime can say, oh, let's go try that. And that, that makes you look like a winner, but is it your audience? audience? And is, is it, ex, ex, what's the word? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Push and, it out to the world. For each, for each business and for each property, you know, you have different demographics of who you're trying to reach. For us with the soccer team, I think we like more millennial fans, but we know that our bread and butter is that younger fan. So sometimes you have to Maybe go where the market the, forces you. Yeah, the others don't go to the game. Yeah. Soccer. <laughs> yeah. Great call. And uh, uh, my name is Romero Ramirez. I'm here to, uh, we're representing a nonprofit organization, so sponsorship is key. The name of the organization, in fact, the club, is Prospanica. We're about three things. One, career development. Uh, two, uh, professional development. And three, the real key is uh, giving uh, deserving Latinos um, scholarships so they can pursue their MBA. So we'll just segment it to the MBA space. So partnership is key. I'd love to accept your invitation to uh, follow up with her. Sure. Hi, great talk. Well, I'm uh, Susie Craig. I work for UMS in Ann Arbor. Uh, really pleased to be here. If you guys don't have plans this weekend, we have an awesome theater show uh, by Chatra de la Ville. Come to the Power Center. Check it out on UMS. Hi, I'm Martin Smith with Overflow Marketing Solutions, and we help companies take advantage of what would otherwise be missed opportunities using digital marketing. Um, you know, so I think you guys kind of got my agenda for my introduction. Um, I'm with the Center for Digital Engagement. Hi, my name is Kim Burkle. I own Key Community Marketing. Thank you very much for the talk. I love the way you think. Um, we actually assist organizations with community outreach. And um, we do that with the goal of not only making an impact in our community, but also growing the business or the organization that I'm representing. Thank you. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for the great talk a well. My name is Samantha West. I am the Communications Director at the Alzheimer's Association, Michigan Great Lakes Chapter. I will actually be um, giving the talk next month that's all about how you can market on a shoestring budget, which is an essential thing for nonprofits. And I'm so glad that I'm going after this presentation because sponsorship is a huge piece of that puzzle. So thank you very much and uh, hopefully we'll see a bunch of you next month. Hi everybody, I'm Stacy from Dollar Bill, your local digital print shop. And that was great because not only am I on the board of this, but I'm on the board of four more. And I somehow got myself to be the sponsorship chair on most of those. So this is making my brain just woo. So thank you. And uh, speaking of which, WXW is one of my other groups. And we're having the big forum on October 25th. It's all day at the, um, <clears throat> I don't remember actually. But Washington Community College, thank you, um, event, and you learn, and you learn, and it's workshops, it's all hands-on, um, it's, you know, mainly women's exchange, but men can go to, so look that up, and uh, and hopefully we'll see some of you there. Hi, everybody, my name is Carmen, I'm with the Michigan Business Innovation Association, and um, thank you for your presentation. We're looking forward to growing our membership organization uh, that supports entrepreneurial activities across the state of Michigan. Hi, my name is Linda Baker, and I do business development for nonprofits, and once again, like everybody said, it's great to hear the idea of customization and expectation. I think there's a lot that you don't ask about. Really thank you. Hi, I'm Bud Gibson, Director for the Center for Digital Engagement. Uh, hopped in on Nina's coattails last time. We actually sold 15 tickets over lunch. So uh, appreciate the LA2M sponsorship and Jim's willingness to work with us on an individualized basis. Uh, 
and uh, appreciate the talk. Uh, most of our courses, actually, that we teach in digital advertising are working with nonprofits on a shoestring budget, uh, National Network for Depression Centers, the Clancy Foundation, uh, Growing Hope, Ann Arbor Hands On Museum, just to name a few. So uh, we are always looking for new nonprofits to work with in our classes. And there's still time to sign up for the Digital Marketing Workshop using code LA2M and get that $15 discount. Valid through the end of the month, but tickets are starting to grow scarce. I'm Carol, <coughs> excuse me, I'm Carol Hopper. I worked at Northwestern Mutual Financial Network. We're 160 years old. And so I wear many hats as a community volunteer and people come asking for money all the time. Thank you. You don't look that old. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Larissa. Uh, my business is called She's Blossoming. It's a business that allows women to live a holistic wellness lifestyle through empowerment and breaks. Hello, I'm Samantha Potter. I'm with the Ann Arbor Area Transportation Authority. Uh, and I help out with PR, marketing, social media, getting sponsorships, a little bit of everything. So that was a great speech. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christina George with the National Bean Foundation of Michigan. I am a social event coordinator doing special event fundraising in the Ann Arbor area. Uh, we have lots of events. Um, we also do prevent, our whole mission is prevention. So um, check out our website and campfm.org. And if anyone is looking to sponsor any events here today, uh, we have a few. So let me know. Thanks. Hi, I'm Rhonda Foxworth with Bank of Ann Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Rhodes. I'm the marketing coordinator at Bank of Ann Arbor. I'm Roger Rail. I help with a lot of networking groups as a venture catalyst. Uh, and tonight is our October meeting for Ann Arbor Video Interest Group. So anybody that's involved in video or needs video in any way, uh, a2vig.org is where you go to learn about it and to RSVP. Also, I'm going to this uh, Best of the Rest entrepreneurial event at Michigan Theater, 2.30 to 5 o'clock. It's, uh, they're giving away $100,000. Uh, Steve Case and I think uh, Dan Gilbert's going to be there, so it's going to be a good talk. Good. My name is Domo, and what a surprise to see Michelle here. She was a student of mine when she was in second grade at Abbott School when I was a gym teacher there. So, besides being a gym teacher and a teacher printer and a spinning instructor, uh, Husband, father. I'm also a pink mom. Uh, Hard to see. The light. One trick. Oh no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, I also have a business now called Elmo's Ping Pong Palace. It's uh, a wonderful sport. Microphone. Microphone. It's a wonderful sport. Thank you. And you know, on a spectrum of happiness. From ha ha fun to deep satisfaction fun, ping pong covers the whole gamut. We go, we play, especially people our age and older who remember playing ping pong when we were young kids. Just hitting the ball back and forth is fun. And then when we play doubles, people bumping into each other, high fiving and so on. We are located on Dexter and Albert Road towards Dexter. It's called Elmo's Ping Pong Palace. Look us up on Facebook. And I'd love to see you there. Thank you. I'm from Print Studios. I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer, which covers just about everything business portraits, small objects to buildings, trucks, and uh, some of the things I've shot. I shoot a lot of running and golf and golf courses. I've heard ball of any one of those. You've probably seen me. It's why I came in late today. I had about 3,000 pictures. I was editing from Saturday now to get to Sunday's pictures. Uh, <laughs> so Carter will have these pictures up in about an hour, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 We appreciate that. Uh, again, thank you everyone for being here. Again, if you could put your hands together for Bilal.
We greatly appreciate the, the quality of speakers that we have here. Um, we have a great organization, great group of people that bring together great speakers, and, and today was, was no different than that. So thank you, Bilal. We appreciate it. Uh, as Samantha said, uh, next month's meeting, November, I believe it's November 8th, second Wednesday of every month, we're here. Uh, and it will be uh, for nonprofits on, on how to market with a shoestring budget and, and your social networks. And I think that's a very relevant topic for all of us. So hopefully I'll be here. If you had a good time today, please come back again next month. Bring a coworker, bring a friend. Uh, we love to grow the business. Uh, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day. If you want to talk to Bill L, we'll stick around. But please network with each other. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're